So the tree diagram is the last method we haven't used yet, okay? Formulas, we still can use those. If you can use formulas like we did on the homework, like I just did on the homework questions, do that. Two-way tables, either given to you or you create one, that works. Venn diagrams, Venn diagrams are great when there's an or situation or an and situation, right? Okay. So, okay, the last one, we all right? Okay, the last one is tree diagram. Sometimes tree diagrams are the best way. Sometimes they're not. Up to this point, tree diagrams haven't been useful, but today they're gonna be useful, okay? So like I said, I pushed the quiz a couple more days because it was supposed to be on Friday, but I wanna do a little bit more review. So it's not until Tuesday. The quiz is going to be on Tuesday. It's going to be like really short, four questions, five questions max. Okay. But on the quiz, I'm not going to tell you use a tree diagram or use a Venn diagram or use the formulas or use a two-way table, right? You have to read the question and determine which is the best way to do it. Okay. So even though it says draw a tree diagram, look for things that why would a tree diagram be best for this one? Why would a... Venn diagram not be good? Why would a two-way table not be as good? Okay? Because sometimes you can do more than one, but you're just choosing the one that makes more sense. Okay? Okay, so number five. In 2015, Spotify revealed that about 40% of its users are aged 13 to 24. 25 of them are aged 25 to 34. 28% of them are 35 and older. Suppose that for the 13 to 40, 24 year olds, 85 of those identified pop as their favorite genre of music. 59 of the 25 to 34 year olds identified pop as their favorite genre of music. And 23% of the, those older than 35 identified pop as their favorite genre of music. Suppose we select one of these people, one of these Spotify users in 2005 at random and record his or her age and whether his or her favorite music is pop. So the first thing we gotta do is draw a tree diagram. When does a tree diagram work? A tree diagram works when there's multiple things going on. This, and then this, and then this, right? The first this is age groups, 47, 13 to 24, 25 and 25 to 34, and 38% for 35 and older. And then it goes a little bit deeper. Okay, of those people who are 20, 13 to 24, 85 of them prefer. So when they go a little bit deeper, when they take multiple events, right? So event one would be their age. Event two would be whether they like pop music or not. Okay, that's when we can use a tree diagram. So the tree diagram starts with the first event. So I'm going to consider the first event to be ages. Okay, there's three separate ages, right? So my first, I'm gonna start with three branches, okay? So I'm gonna start, you wanna give yourself, always give yourself plenty of room because tree diagrams sometimes can get a little bit big or you run out of room, okay? All right, okay, so there's three options. The person could be 13 to 24, right? The person could be uh, 25 to 34 or 35 or older. So the first branch is gonna be people who are 30, 20, or sorry, 20, 13 to 24. The second branch is gonna be 25 to 34. And then the last branch is gonna be 35 or older. 35 or older. All of the Spotify users fall into one of those three categories. 47 of them, 47% are in the first one. So I'm gonna put 47% on the first branch. 47% of them are 13 to 24. 25% of them are 25 to 34. And then 28% are down here. 
Okay, that's the first event. The second event is whether they listen to pop music or not, whether that's their favorite music genre. Each one of those has a category. So there's another offshoot. These guys have two options. Either pop is their favorite or pop is not their favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna say pop or P PC. PC means not pop, right? Pop is their favorite type of music or not. Okay. So when I'm only considering, when I'm only considering 13 to 24, so if 13 to 24 was everybody that I was considering, out of those, 85% favored that music. That means 15% don't. They like other types of music. Now that doesn't mean 85% overall, right? This 85 only takes into consideration 13 to 24 year olds. 13, 85% of these guys prefer that brand of music, okay? So just be careful with that. It's not 85% overall, it's 85% of that category, okay? All right, next one. 25 to 34, same thing. Do they prefer pop music or do they prefer something else? They are 59% and the rest would be 41% because either it is your favorite type of music or it's not. Okay. And then the last one is 35 or older. What is that? Uh, let's see, 23. So that means the ones who don't favor it would be 77. Tree diagrams are great because they're visual. They're extremely visual because you can literally follow the branches and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, that's what we're gonna do, depending on what the question says. Okay, that's my tree diagram. I'm still going to use formulas if I need to. So just because I use a tree diagram doesn't mean I use I can't use formulas or anything like that. Okay, so what do I do with it? Find the probability that the person identifies his or her music, his favorite music as pop. That's their favorite brand of music. Well, which path down the tree leads me to that brand of music? Which which path? Not all of them. So if I go, so if I'm 13 to 24, your guys' age, if I'm 13 to 24, right? And I go here, one of them's gonna lead to pop music. The other one's not. The other one's gonna lead to some other brand of music, right? The question said, favors that music. So now look at your tree diagram. How many different paths lead me to that green? Three, right? So I'm gonna go highlight them. One, two, three. There's three different paths that lead me to that. Okay. So let's start with 13 to 24 year olds. What's the probability that if I'm 13 to 24 and I listen to Spotify, that my favorite brand of music is pop? Well, what are the chances of me being 13 to 24? 47%. And then if I fit into that category, then what is the probability that I also listen to, or pop music is my favorite type of music? 85, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply both of them. We haven't multiplied before, this is the first. We haven't multiplied. Anytime you get a tree diagram, you multiply down the tree diagram. Okay. So then you get your calculator. You get 0.3.4. If I round up, I get 0.4, because 0.3995, so it would be 0 0.400, okay? That's one path, there's two more. I could be 25 to 34, 25% chance I'm there. And then if I'm in there, there's a 
59% chance that that's my favorite type of music. Point one four eight. And then the last one's thirty five and old. Point zero six four. So there's three different ways to get to that brand of music. Which way do I choose? All of them. Yeah, all of them, because they all answer the question. They all say which ones where pop is your favorite music. They all are. So if they all are, I have to add them. So I'm going to add. So the probability pop being your favorite is 0 0.4 plus 0.148 plus 0 0.064 we get 0 0.62 612 0.612 Overall, that number is overall. Each of them represents a specific demographic. 0.4 doesn't talk about everybody, right? 0.14 doesn't talk about everybody. This number here, this number here, this number here only talks about specific groups. Here's a question I have. No one brought this question up and sometimes people ask. We've never done this before. We've never multiplied. Why is it okay to multiply? Why is it okay to multiply? You actually know this answer, right? A lot of times I have people say, whoa, 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 we haven't multiplied before. Why will we multiply? Why is it okay to multiply these numbers? I understand the adding part, but why is it okay to multiply? Hmm? Know Not close. We don't know they're independent. They didn't tell us, but we're just using this formula. That's all we're doing. We're using this formula here. The only thing is, we're doing this. This is essentially what we're doing. Because let's say A is age and B is um, pop. Given this number here is given that they are this age, what's the probability they like pop? See, this is already, the given part's already built in. The given part is already built in. So if the given part's already built in, then it's okay for us to multiply. That's why because this number is based off of this number here. It's not 85% of everyone. It's only 85% of this guy here, okay? That's why we could. That's why it's okay for us to multiply, okay? All right, answer question C. Answer question C, let's see. Use the, use the table or use the tree diagram. So if you're stuck, look at the yellow part I highlighted. Why did I highlight that yellow part? No. We just did the second part too. Everything we've done about it. We, we, it's all in the, this is all in the tree diagram. But what specifically about the yellow part is important or we've seen before? They don't use the exact phrasing, but essentially what does the yellow part say? There you go. Given that, the person likes pop music. Anytime you see that, automatically go right to this formula. Don't even think about it, go right to this formula, right? The given part is pop. That's the given part, okay? So let's set this up. So what they're asking is, given that they already like pop music, that's a given already, we already know that. Given that they like pop music, What's the probability that they are age 13 to 24? So that's essentially what the question they're asking. And you guys have done that before. We've done that for a few days. Your assignment that you have was based on that, right? So let's finish out the formula. The probability of both 
over the probability of pop. That's just the formula. Instead of A's and B's, I just used 13 to 24 is A, pop is B. Now let's fill in the numbers. How do I find the top? The probability of 13 to 24 and pop. How do I find that? Look at the tree, right? One of those branches leads to that, 13 to 24 and pop. It's this guy right here. That's that guy right there, 13 to 24 and pop. That number was 0.4. I've already calculated that number. Okay, so that's gonna go on top. Over total pop, probability that they like pop, period. What is that number going to be? That's the number we just calculated, right? 0.612. Divide and you get 0.654. Okay. So that means if I already know, you've already told me the person that's their favorite type of music. I already know that. What's the probability that they are also 13 to 24? 65, 66%, okay? So again, anytime you see given then or something that sounds like given that, go right to the formula because that's what you're gonna use, okay? Go right to that formula because you're gonna see that a lot. No matter what, no matter if it's a two-way table, Venn diagram, tree diagram, you're gonna see that, okay? Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, so a university professor fails 20% of his students on the final, in the final, or on the final. After the final, he polls the students and asks them how many of them studied for more than three hours for that final. Of those who passed, 72% say they studied for it. Of those who failed, 31% say they studied for it. So there's two events here. What's the first event? Pass, whether you passed or failed the final. That's the first one, right? And then what's the second event? If you studied or not, right? Okay, so draw a tree diagram for that. I want you to draw a tree diagram for that. What is that gonna look like? Okay, so we said the first event was pass or fail, right? Okay, so there's that's only two options. We don't have three options this time, it's only two. So pass or fail. And then it says 20% of his students fail. So that's 20% down here. That means 80%. Either you pass or you fail. There's only two options. Okay. And then off of that, we have two more options. Afterwards, he asked the students, did you study or not? Or study for three and a half hours, three or hours or more. So we'll say study, not study, even though it's technically not studying is not correct because they could have studied for two hours and 59 minutes, but they would answer no on, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean they didn't study, but it's not three hours or more, right? So I'm just gonna put an S and not S just so that I don't have to get long, let's write something longer. Okay, so out of the people who passed, 72 said, yes, I did study for three hours or more. Um, and then out of the people who failed, 31 said they studied for it. So what are the missing? How do I find the missing percentages or decimals? Mm -hmm. Just take away from 100 because either you studied for three hours or more or you didn't. It's a yes or no answer. There's no in between. Okay, so that's our picture, right? Not as many branches as this guy, but it's the same idea, right? It's the same idea. There's only four outcomes. Either you pass and you studied, you pass and you didn't study. You fail and you study, you fail and you not study. There's only four outcomes, okay? All right, so now what I want you to do is if you look at the next page, A through F, A through F, I want you to answer A through F. I'll do A with you. Actually, I'll do A with you. I'll get you guys going. We'll do A together and then I'll let you guys do the rest just to get you guys going. Okay, so 
A says probability a student studied. Okay, so I'm going to write probability that they studied. So let's go to my tree diagram. Doesn't say given that. There's no given that, right? There's nothing in there that says given that. If it did, I'd go straight to the formula. But there isn't in anything. So I'm not going to go to the formula. Okay? I'm looking for study. Yeah, there's no given that. Right? This one doesn't. Others will, but not this one, not A. Where does the studying lead you? Where is studying going to lead you? Which or which paths are studying? One, two, right? So there's two paths that will give me a study. So I got to find the probability here and the probability here, add them together. Okay, just like we did on the last one. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the probability that they studied overall is 0.638. About 64% of the students studied over three hours. Okay, now I want you to do B, do the rest, B through F. Okay, I'll give you... 10 minutes or so. If you need more, it's okay. Okay, so I finished out the table. So there's four, or that's the table, the diagram, the tree diagram. There's four different things that could happen, right? I could pass and study. I can pass and not study. I can fail and study. I can fail and not study. Those are the four different things, four different outcomes that could happen. And then I add, multiplied all the probabilities. Okay, I filled it out. So what would happen if I add up all of the probabilities? What do you think they would equal? One whole, right? One whole, because there's nothing else that could happen, right? These are the only three, uh, four things that could happen. There's no more paths that could happen, right? Either one of those four things has to happen, okay? That's how you can kind of check your answer. If all of the ends, uh, all of the uh, tree diagram ends, their probabilities equal to one or something very close to one, then you know you did everything right. Okay. Okay, so based off of that, we're going to answer these questions here. Okay, so we did the studies apart already. Doesn't study. Well, 0.224 plus 0.138, the probability that a student doesn't study for three hours, at least for three hours, is 0.362. All right, so now I highlighted in yellow the first part, if, 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 because that is the given part. That is the given that part. They don't use the words given that, but that's the given that part, right? So I just, since I knew that, I wrote them out. Instead of A's and B's, I use P's for S's, S for studies, F for fails, S, C for not study, okay? And I found all the probabilities using that formula, right? Using that formula, using the, the general multiplication rule. So my question is, which one is the highest probability? Which one has the highest probability, chance of happening? Stu if a student studies, they pass. Does that make sense? That the highest probability will be if a student studies, they pass the test? Is that, is that, is that logical? Yeah, right? Yeah. Five seven six. Five seven six. Oh, for up here? Oh, okay, yeah. Five seven six. Um. 
What's the lowest probability here? How, there's a 1% chance that a student who studied failed. That's what I, I, I hear that a lot. Why didn't you study for the test? Uh, because if I would have studied and I would have failed, it would have been a waste of my time. There's only a 1% chance of that happening, right? There's only a 1% chance of that happening. Does it happen? One time out of every 100 tests, it'll happen, right? So it's just, there's nothing to that, right? Research shows that if you study, you'll do better on the test. That number is almost 90%, okay? There's only a 1% chance that you put the time in and then you'll, you'll, something will happen, right? Okay. So yeah. All right. Okay, so do number seven. I want you to do number seven right now. Do number seven. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you which to use.